Hi, it's Sherry. Welcome back to my channel, Canterbury Cottage. As most of you know, my channel is all about creating beautiful home decor on a budget. And what budget is tighter than free? That's right, today's video is full of great ideas for ways that you can update and refresh your home decor without spending a penny. I am so excited to share all of these ideas with you. So let's get started. I save the glass jars from pickles, salsa, spaghetti sauce, you name it. Here's an easy project. Collect four or five jars of different sizes. Spray paint the lids with black spray paint. Measure the jars and then create simple decals on your Cricut machine. Stickers or rub-on transfers would also work. I like to use numbers. Then the jars can be used to store any number of things. You could also tie ribbon or twine around the top if you like. I like to use my jars as storage in the bathroom. They're the perfect size for Q-tips and cotton balls. Small jars are great for storing matches. Have you seen those boutique match jars that cost $15 to $20? Well, here's an easy way to duplicate that. I print out a vintage matchbox label and Mod Podge it to the side of my jam jar. I cut the striker off the matchbox and glue it to the bottom or the back of my jar. I painted the lid to match the color of the matches. I think my Dollar Tree matches are pretty cute. I thought this old cologne bottle would make a pretty vase. I used pliers to snap off the spray nozzle. I then used Goof Off and a straight razor to scrape off the brand logo. A little twine tied around the top hides the threading for the lid. Here's a project for those of us that have a bunch of old tin canisters shoved in the back of our kitchen cabinets. Paint the bases and the lids separately with your favorite color of spray paint. You could make traditional decals on your Cricut with words such as flour, sugar, coffee, etc. But here's a different idea. I printed out vintage botanical images of herbs and spices such as thyme and cinnamon and Mod Podged these to the front of each can. I found the center of each lid and drilled a small hole. I could have attached a small knob, but instead I created little poles using twine and a bead. I decided I wanted a more rustic look, so when the Mod Podge was dry, I ran sandpaper over the labels to rough them up a bit. Then I applied a top coat of Mod Podge. Who knew Christmas tins could look so cute sitting on my kitchen counter in April? Here's another painted tin that I use for storage in my bathroom. I also like to save and paint old paint cans. They make great planners for real or fake plants. You can leave them plain or add a cute label. Changing out the art in frames that you already own is a great way to update your home decor. You can leave the frames as they are or change them up with some paint. I took a picture of our street sign with our house in the background to put into this old frame. I added a Dollar Tree mat that I already had on hand. The back kept falling out, and so I used paper tape to keep it in place. It doesn't have to be a street sign. Pictures of anything in your neighborhood would be nice. These prints once hung in my bathroom. They are close-up photos of my bathroom rug. Cutting pictures from a book that you own is another easy way to update your art. 
These bird prints are the perfect size for some very small frames that I have. It took less than five minutes to cut these pictures out and pop them into the frames. This tree image was cut from an old home decor magazine. Old note cards and postcards also have pretty images that look even better when put in a frame. Here are more ideas for changing out your art. The possibilities are really endless. Here is a fun idea for recycling old or ugly candles. Put the candles in an oven safe container and set the temperature to 200 degrees. I set the oven timer and check it every 20 minutes or so. When the wax is melted, I pull out the wicks and reuse those if possible. Using a little wax, I set the wick in the bottom of my new container. If you want, you can add a few drops of essential oil to the wax before pouring it into your container. Use pencils or straws to keep the wicks in position and from drooping down into the wax. I love how those cheap old Dollar Tree candles look in this vintage brass bowl. Teacups make such pretty candle containers and would make a great Mother's Day gift, especially if the cup is from a set of special family china. You can even turn really unexpected items into candles. This terracotta lid was headed to the trash until I decided to turn it into a candle. I poured in a bit too much wax and the pencil left an indentation on the surface. Stick around to the end of the video and I'll tell you how I fixed it. I put the lid in a stand that once held a glass bowl of decorative rocks. Here's a recycled candle poured in a small enamel pot. Some of the best decorative accessories are practical items that you use every day. Cutting board displays are super popular right now. Rolling pins and wooden spoons look great when grouped together, as does silverware. When I was styling my china cabinet, I pulled these pretty little napkin rings out of a drawer so that I could enjoy them every day. On my living room coffee table, I have a tray filled with vintage games. My galoshes are on display in the mudroom next to a bread box that holds winter gloves. Everyday washcloths, towels, and soaps make both practical and pretty bathroom displays. I believe that nature provides the most beautiful home decor. I realize that not everyone has their own yard. You could collect items on a walk in a natural setting or even in your own neighborhood. I am lucky to have evergreens in my yard that provide me with plenty of pine cones. These hydrangeas were in my neighbor's trash, so I just brought them home and dried them out. No matter how beautiful a room is, eventually we will tire of it. Perhaps the easiest and cheapest way to refresh your home decor is to switch things up from other rooms. When I no longer had use for this china cabinet in my dining room, I moved it to my master bedroom. It provides great storage. I hated these cheap canvas prints about a minute after I brought them home. And this lamp, although pretty, is much too large for this small area. These vintage prints are the only thing I have that were my grandfather's, and yet I had them in storage in the basement. I loved them here so I went shopping in my house to find the perfect lamp to put next to them. I also went hunting for some brass accents to complement the gold frames. Since I still really like the chinoiserie lamp, I moved it to the dining room. Here are some additional suggestions of things that you might move from room to room to update and refresh your home decor. 
Just about anything can be a collection, and collections make unique and interesting decor. I'm lucky to have a very pretty built-in bar in my home, but we don't drink very much. So I've filled the shelves with a variety of small collections. These game pieces are my favorite. In the laundry room, I have jars filled with buttons and spools. In the kitchen, I have a jar filled with white farm animal napkin rings. My son has kept a chapstick collection since his grade school days. I love to collect clocks, whether they work or not, and my cat loves this collection of elephants in the living room. Do you have old things that you love that just don't seem to have a place or purpose in your home? Try to think of those things in a different way, not what their initial purpose was, but what their potential purpose could be. This mailbox is so much more interesting than a towel rack from Home Depot. And this ladder in my laundry room provides great storage and gives me a place to hang up clothes. And a broken clock makes a fun planter for a child's bedroom. This old lantern makes great storage for old books that I want to keep but will never read. And a vintage oil pitcher is much more intriguing than a traditional vase. This small stool made a perfect bedside table for this low-rise bed. Don't throw out those old appliances just because they don't work. They can make great nostalgic decor. This old lunchbox and thermos gave me inspiration to create this school-themed vignette in my bookcase. Outdoors decor can look great when brought inside, especially during the spring and summer months. I love the texture this trellis adds to my mudroom. Many viewers have commented on the many outdoor lanterns that I have inside my home, so I thought I would show you the process that I go through. Usually the top and bottom are attached with screws, so I remove these first. Also, you can usually unscrew the light socket. You may need to cut the wires to pull it out. Once the socket is out, any remaining wires are easy to remove. There was a nut on the inside base of the lantern that was holding the arm in place. I couldn't get a good grip on it until I unscrewed the base and took it off. Once the arm was removed, I had intended on reattaching the base, but because it was so small, I decided the lantern was sturdier without it. So I attached the screw caps back to the screws without attaching the base. I thought this metal plant cup would make a good alternate base. Using my angle grinder, I took off the spike. I spray painted it black to match the lantern, and then it was ready for display. I could have left the spike if I was putting a candle inside, but I wanted to have other options, like this bird with feathers gathered from my yard. This iron plant stand was pretty rusty, but I like rust, so I just gave it a good cleaning with a multi-purpose cleaner and added my plants. I love the chippy paint on this vintage plant stand. And just to mix things up, I brought the wicker chairs from my front porch into my dining room. No one ever sits out there anyway. And this garden stool keeps the blue chair from hiding my fig tree. My last idea is maybe the easiest of them all. Add embellishments to old things to give them a new look. Notice how a simple ribbon spices up this jar of napkin rings. Hot gluing ribbon to the top and bottom refreshes a tired lampshade. 
I tore this piece of lace off a dress I was throwing out and used it to make a little bow for the wreath in my dining room. I also attached a bow to the wreath on my stove hood. I also like to use wreaths, candle rings, and greenery to enhance large or plain items. I think we can go overboard in putting words and phrases on our home decor, but I also think they can make something ordinary look like something special when used on just a few selected items. I think the labels on these bird prints takes them up a notch. I decided to add a new element to the end of my videos that I'm going to call Tuesday's Tips. These will be tips that I did not have time to share with you during the actual video. So today's tips pertain to candle making. Did you know that you can put a small piece of crayon in your melted wax to turn it whatever color you like? If the surface of your candle wax gets messed up before it completely solidifies, say for example the wick gets stuck in the wax, an easy fix is to put the candle and the container back in the oven at 200 degrees for about 15 or 20 minutes just until the top layer of wax melts and it will smooth itself out. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. And I'd love for you to leave a comment and let me know which idea was your favorite. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I hope you'll consider pressing that button. Until next Tuesday, bye-bye for now.